how monk does one not neglect wisdom? There are these six elements, the earth element, water element, fire element, air element, space element, and consciousness element. What monk is the earth element? The earth element may be either internal or external. What is the internal earth element? Whatever internally belonging to oneself is solid, solidified, and clung to, that is, head, hair, body, hair, nails, teeth, skin, flesh, sinew, bone, bone, marrow, kidney, heart, liver, diaphragm, spleen, lung, large intestine, small intestine, contents of the stomach, feces, or whatever else internally belonging to oneself is solid, solidified, and clung to. This is called the internal earth element. Now both the internal earth element and the external earth element are simply earth element. And that should be seen as it actually is with proper wisdom thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. When one sees it thus as it actually is with proper wisdom, one becomes disenchanted with the earth element and makes the mind dispassionate towards the earth element. What monk is the water element? The water element may be either internal or external. What is the internal water element? Whatever internally belonging to oneself is water, watery, and clung to, that is, bile, phlegm, pus, blood, sweat, fat, tear, grease, spittle, snot, oil of the joint, urine, or whatever else internally belonging to oneself is water, watery, and clung to. This is called the internal water element. Now both the internal water element and the external water element are simply water element. And that should be seen as it actually is with proper wisdom thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. When one sees it thus as it actually is with proper wisdom, one becomes disenchanted with the water element and makes the mind dispassionate towards the water element. It's up here for a moment now. Uh, in the meditation on the uh, loathsomeness of the body uh, or unattractiveness of the body, we have to chant 32 parts of the body, uh, head, hair, body, hair, nails, teeth, skin, flesh, sinew, bone, etc. And these uh, 32 parts, uh, are the first uh, half uh, are the uh, solid, uh, more solid uh, parts of the body, uh, and the solid parts of the body are referred to as the earth element. And then the second half uh, consists of the watery parts of the body, uh, bile, phlegm, pus, blood, sweat, tear, grease, etc. Et uh, so uh, this is the two uh, parts uh, of the 32 parts of the body. Uh. And what monk is the fire element? The fire element may be either internal or external. What is the internal fire element? Whatever internally belonging to oneself is fire, fiery and clung to. That is, by, that by which one is warmed, ages and is consumed. And that by which what is eaten, drunk, consumed and tasted gets completely digested. Or whatever else internally belonging to oneself is fire, fiery and clung to. This is called the internal fire element. Now both the internal fire element and the external fire element are simply fire element. And that should be seen as it actually is with proper wisdom thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. When one sees it thus as it actually is with proper wisdom, one becomes disenchanted with the fire element and makes the mind dispassionate towards the fire element. What monk is the air element? The air element may be either internal or external. What is the internal air element? Whatever internally belonging to oneself is air, airy and clung to, that is, upgoing winds, downgoing winds, winds in the belly, winds in the bowels, winds that cause to the limbs, in breath and out breath, or whatever else internally belonging to oneself is air, airy and clung to. This is called the internal air element. Now both the internal air element and the external air element are simply air element. And that should be seen as it actually is with proper wisdom thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. When one sees it thus, as it actually is with proper wisdom, one becomes disenchanted with the air element and makes the mind dispassionate towards the air element. Stop it for a moment. 
So in all these, uh, the Buddha says, uh, we should see yeah, that this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. Yeah. And how to see this? We can only see this uh, when we realize uh, that all these elements uh, that our body is made up of uh, is impermanent, uh, subject to change, uh, subject to conditions, uh, and ever changing, uh, always changing. And the Buddha says whatever is changing uh, cannot be I, cannot be mine. Uh, so once, if one uh, takes it at I and mine, uh, then one tends to cling to it, uh, cling to the body as I or mine. Uh, then uh, when it changes, uh, uh, the Buddha says, uh, all bodies uh, will either grow old or sick or die. Uh, so if we cling to it, uh, we will suffer. Uh, so if we can see uh, whether uh, it is our body or some other body, uh, always realize uh, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. Uh, uh, then only uh, we can become disenchanted. Uh, and dispassionate uh, towards these elements. Uh. And what monk is the space element? The space element may be either internal or external. What is the internal space element? Whatever internally belonging to oneself is space, spatial and clung to. That is, the holes of the ears, the nostrils, the door of the mouth, and that aperture whereby what is eaten, drunk, consumed and tasted gets swallowed, and where it collects and whereby it is excreted from below, and whatever else internally belonging to oneself is space, spatial and clung to. This is called the internal space element. Now both the internal space element and the external space element are simply space element, and that should be seen as it actually is with proper wisdom thus. This is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. When one sees it thus as it actually is with proper wisdom, one becomes disenchanted with the space element and makes the mind dispassionate towards the space element. Then there remains only consciousness, purified and bright. And what does one cognize with that consciousness? One cognizes this is pleasant. One cognizes this is painful. One cognizes this is neither painful nor pleasant. In dependence on a contact to be felt as pleasant, there arises a pleasant feeling. When one feels a pleasant feeling, one understands, I feel a pleasant feeling. One understands, with the cessation of that same contact to be felt as pleasant, its corresponding feeling, the pleasant feeling that arose in dependence on that contact to be felt as pleasant, ceases and subsides. In dependence on the contact to be felt as painful, there arises a painful feeling. When one feels a painful feeling, one understands, I feel a painful feeling. One understands, with the cessation of that same contact, to be felt as painful, its corresponding feeling, the painful feeling that arose in dependence on that contact, to be felt as painful, ceases and subsides. In dependence on the contact, to be felt as neither painful nor pleasant, there arises another painful nor pleasant feeling. When one feels a neither painful nor pleasant feeling, one understands, I feel a neither painful nor pleasant feeling. One understands, with the cessation of that same contact, to be felt as neither painful nor pleasant, its corresponding feeling, the neither painful nor pleasant feeling, that arose in dependence on that contact, to be felt as neither painful nor pleasant, ceases and subsides. Monk, just as from the contact and friction of two fire sticks, heat is generated and fire is produced, and with the separation and disjunction of these two fire sticks, the corresponding heat ceases and subsides. So too, in dependence on the contact to be felt as pleasant, to be felt as painful, to be felt as neither painful nor pleasant, there arises a corresponding feeling. One understands that the cessation of that same contact to be felt as uh, pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant, uh, its corresponding feeling ceases and subsides. I'll stop here for a moment. So, here is this last part, uh, where the Buddha talks about consciousness. Uh, Buddha says, uh, one cognizes, this is pleasant, one cognizes, this is painful, or this is neither painful nor pleasant. So, consciousness uh, tells you uh, that you have a pleasant feeling, or a painful feeling, or a neutral feeling. Uh. So, this uh, feeling, you know, uh, is just a type of consciousness. Uh. Uh, sometimes, uh, 
some people get confused uh, they, they, they think uh, feeling perception volition all uh, very distinct from each other very distinct from consciousness also uh, but they are all different types of consciousness uh, uh, feelings is, is a type of consciousness perception is also a type of consciousness volition also is a type of consciousness etc even this uh, five elements uh, uh, earth water fire wind and space, uh, they are also perceptions. Uh. For example, uh, uh, the earth element. The earth element uh, is, the, is the hardness, the perception of hardness. Uh. This perception of whether it's hard or it's soft, uh, it's just a perception. And perception is a type of consciousness. Uh. Uh, similarly, hot or cold is also a perception. Uh. So although we think uh, that the physical world uh, consists of these uh, this uh, solidity, uh, liquidity, uh, heat, and all that. Nah? But uh, actually, uh, all these are perceptions. Nah? So because they are all perceptions, nah? they are all uh, uh, part of consciousness. Nah? Part of consciousness. They are just uh, perception in the mind. That means even the physical world nah, is mind-made. Nah? Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not so uh, different. Nah? The, the, body and the mind. Uh, so that's why uh, sometimes I like to give the example. Uh, for example, if a person has fallen into hell uh, and because of his karma, uh, he is burned in hell, uh, he feels the heat, he feels the pain, everything. Uh, and then uh, you imagine uh, an arahan uh, goes into hell to, to see what's happening in hell. This arahan goes into hell, he doesn't feel the heat, he doesn't feel the pain. Why? Because his mind is different. Uh, so, because the mind is different, uh, the perception is different. Uh, so, uh, everything is mind made. Our world uh, is made by our mind. Uh. Fourteen point one at Savati. Monks, I will teach you the diversity of elements. Listen to that and attend closely, I will speak. Yes, noble sir, those monks replied. The Blessed One said this, And what monks is the diversity of elements? The eye element, form element, eye consciousness element, the ear element, sound element, ear consciousness element, the nose element, odor element, nose consciousness element, the tongue element, taste element, tongue consciousness element, the body element, tactile object element, body consciousness element, the mind element, mental phenomena element, mind consciousness element. This monks is called the diversity of elements. So here the Buddha is talking about the 18 elements eh, concerned with the six sense, six sense organs. Eh. The six sense organs are the eye, the ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. And uh, uh, here it mentions the the sense organs and then the sense object. The sense object uh, is form, sound, smell, taste, touch, uh, and thoughts. Uh, these uh, objects are uh, impinged on your senses. Uh, and then with the two conditions, uh, uh, the consciousness arises. Uh, for example, with the eye and the form present, uh, uh, the eye consciousness will arise. Uh, uh, so the third thing is the consciousness. Uh, so these are the 18 elements. Uh.